Okay, Micah. So before we get into our propeller assembly, we got to finish the, the stuff that's on here, okay? Let's put that down for now. This is our hanger piece. So that's what actually ties the rocket onto the wire. And when you look at where this goes, you want to find your two seams. You can see right there's one seam, and that wraps the other side. And so we want to come halfway between those two, and I started a little mark there for where that's going to go. So we want to take this, use the pencil, Micah. Micah, use the pencil. And mark how long we need to make that slot. Okay. Now, because we're using an exacto, Dad's going to do the next part, okay? Okay. You don't have to press very hard because the balsa wood is very soft. It's very soft wood. But I like to make a couple different passes as I go down. <coughs> and I actually make two cuts next to each other. Now remember, the wood is soft, so it will stretch, it'll push back a little bit. And we can always take a little more off if we need more out of there. But I don't have a good wood stretcher, so we don't want to take too much. So I make those two cuts, and then we start working away at the ends. I should be able to grab part of that and pull it out. There we go. And then we'll do a little test fit. And you can see, I'm not quite long enough yet. We have gotta take a little bit more off. But that's okay, because we can always cut a little bit more. our nail files. And I'm going to work that nail file back and forth. Until we can get it all the way up and down that slot. That looks like it's fitting pretty good. A little more down here. There we go. Okay, Micah, so here's one of our little plastic pieces for the fins, okay? And here's a Sharpie. So I want you to draw on the plastic piece what you want your fin to look like. And then we can cut it out and we'll use that as a pattern to make the other ones, okay? So you want them to kind of come to a point? At the bottom. Okay. okay. So we've got our two fins cut out now. And we cut the first one out, right? Mm-hmm. And then we laid it over and used it as a pattern to make our second one? Mm-hmm. All right. So now we're ready to glue those on. So the thing we want to do is we want to orient our slot that's at the top 
we want to make sure that our fins are exactly 90 degrees off of that okay okay so if we look at the end of our rocket and we can see where our hanger is we line that up on the bottom and then to the left and to the right is where we want to mark for our fins now you notice I turned the rocket a little bit because I don't want the fins to go in the crack in the area where we glued together so we've already notched this one and I've marked this one for where that fin needs to go so my command get your pencil we're gonna hold that fin right on the edge here and you need to trace how far we need that notch to go okay trace all the way to the end of the fin all right good job buddy that we did before on this side I'm just gonna film it this time so we're making a really shallow groove it doesn't have to be very deep at all because we're gonna use the glue to actually hold on the fin this is more or less just to give us a little gap a little groove for that glue to go into notice I'm kind of angling my blade when I cut that's so that we back cut and I can take that little piece and just pull it right out and that's really all we need is just just a little bit of a groove so we have a place for the glue to go when we put the fin in yep. so to put our fin on again we're gonna use the <coughs> super glue I'm going to do just a little bead of glue right down the edge. I like putting it on the plastic instead of putting it on the rocket. So get that glue right along the edge. And then we want to slide it down into the slot that we made. Now the important thing is to look at the back of the rocket and make sure that we have the fins lined up straight from each other and that they're 90 degrees to our hanger on the top. That way it's balanced weight-wise. Okay, so our fins have dried now, glue on our fins have dried. We've got everything final sanded. Now we didn't we haven't glued this in yet we'll do that very very last but this is where we have to make a decision of whether we want to paint it or not now painting gives you a really nice smooth finish on the outside but it also adds a lot of weight and so when we did so last year we decided instead of painting and adding all the weight from painting to the rocket that we would just use a sharpie and so Micah colored his rocket last year with red and blue sharpies so this year we're trying just regular markers to add the color on the rocket so it's a good way to get even color all the way around you can do all different kinds of custom designs doesn't add significant weight to the overall rocket and it's something that you can have your boys do on their own they don't need your help to do this
did the red start and run out? Well, just keep working the way around. And always get another red later if we need to. Remember, you want to color with the grain because it'll soak in better. Okay, so we have some color on our rocket now. So Mike is going to start putting together the propeller. So you want to find this little this little red tube that comes in the kit. And then the little wire that has the eye on it. And you want to push the red tube around until it completely covers the hook on the end. Keep pushing it. Get it all the way around. It's as far as I can get it. Alright, I'll help you out a little bit. Alright, so we got our red tube all the way around you. So we got about a half an inch of wire sticking out still. So next, we want to put that into the tip. So the hook goes in the back, just like that. Okay, now somewhere, there we go. There's this little metal piece. So that's actually the part, that's the little bushing that goes in the end of the tip there. So that little metal piece goes in there and then our hook comes up through the bottom. All right, now, once that's in, then the propeller goes on top of that. Put the propeller on, Micah. You wanna make sure, if you look at the propeller, there's one end that's curved, and there's one end that's notched. And you wanna make sure that the curve goes towards the bottom, and that the notch is on the top. Here you can see we have our final assembly in. And you can see the little notch Right here on the propeller. So I'm going to use my pliers and I'm going to bend over the wire at the top and bend it back on itself on the propeller. That'll hold the wire in place on the propeller. So here you can see our finalized propeller assembly. So we've got our wire bent back into the little notch at the end. And then if I pull that up and you can see there's our little brass bushing and you've got a little bit of space until the start of the plastic tube and then if we push all that down into the nose you'll see the back end of that wire is completely covered with the tube and that's important because that's what gives protection to the rubber bands when they're going through there Otherwise, that wire um, stresses the bands too much and they break. So that's how you want to put together your propeller assembly. So our next step is to put our three rubber bands on there. And I say three because you're only supposed to use three bands. Okay. So now we're ready to start putting our bands in. So I got our hook on. If you stretch the bands, they get smaller, and it's easier to put them into the hook. There you go. Now, as you can see, when you put three bands on, that's right to the edge of the hook. It's full. Now, your kit comes with four bands. The reason is you get one extra. So in case anything happens, if you break one of these three bands, you've got a backup that you can replace it with. But a lot of people try to put four bands on 
and it ends up getting over tightened and you'll end up snapping more of your rubber bands and it doesn't really even make it go any faster or any longer um, so we found that just sticking with three bands uh, usually gives us plenty of power to get to the end of the line um, and we don't have nearly as many problems with bands breaking snapping or anything else so get your three bands and now we're ready to thread them into the rocket as we get ready to uh, assemble the rocket, I want to go over a couple quick things. One is, um, this is a little tool we made for threading the bands through the rocket. Uh, it's nothing complicated. This is just a piece of copper wire that we twisted up. It's got a little hook on this end and it's got a T that we can pull against on the other end. Um, I've seen these made out of coat hangers, all different things, but you want to make sure it's long enough that you can get all the way through the body of the rocket. Um, and it, it doesn't need to be any, anything expensive or complicated. Um, we've already gone over how we assembled this. I also wanted to show an example of one that's done poorly. Um, so this is one that we actually took out of uh, one of our boys rockets uh, this last year's race. Uh, and you can see how far in the loop is into the head. And what was happening with this was as the rubber bands spun around, they were actually rubbing on the inside of this and it was tearing through the rubber bands. It, every time we wound it up um, and let it go, they would either bind up, we'd, we'd let the rocket go and this wouldn't turn, um, or the bands would just snap while we were winding it. And after three rounds of trying to figure out what was wrong with this, I pulled the tip out and you could see immediately um, what, was, what the problem was and that was that the, the loop was too far in. So you wanna make sure um, when you get this done, you got it all spaced and your bushings in there, that you have a little gap between the bushing and the, the red um, cover on your wire. And you want to make sure that you have a gap between the head of this and the back side of your housing. So to lace these up, I put the tool in through the back side. I take my three bands and then just pull it through um, and having one of these available on race day is invaluable in helping people get them ready to go so uh, we do not glue the tips in at all uh, if you haven't messed with the sizing and you've got your holes aligned uh, they don't need it um, and then the last step is we like to cut uh, a little groove and I usually do that with a Dremel you can do it just with a pocket knife, um, but we make that little groove size to fit the, the little holder piece at the back. So this just loops in loose under those three rubber bands. Um, some people will tie these or they'll do a, a loop with their rubber bands, um, something like this, and they'll put that in the, in the center. Um, I don't think it's necessary. It will keep it from falling out, but what's the worst thing that happens if it falls out? You go over and you pick it up. Um, putting the knot in there actually, again, puts more strain on those bands and could cause those bands to break. It also takes up uh, some of the distance from your propeller to the back of your band, so it makes your band shorter, which means that as it's wound, the potential energy is actually lower. So knotting this in the back um, will actually slow your rocket down and prevent it from going as far as it could um, if you had just left the full bands alone. So we don't knot them or anything. I just put this right in the middle of the three bands um, and then snap it into that groove on the back and you're ready to go. So as we put them on our, our twister, um, wind them up, um, this will Hold that tight in the back um, and you are ready to race.